Okay, well, this is actually how I got started with uh, activism in, in general. Uh, we, we at Fort Bragg were treated to a evangelical membership drive festival f that was co-sponsored by the chaplains here as well as the Billy Graham Evangelical Association. And, uh, you know, they, they have millions and millions of dollars, and that's what they do. It's, they're run by Franklin Graham, who was actually banned by the Army from U.S. events previously. We have no idea how he keeps sneaking back in. But uh, he, he did. He brought this festival that um, they, they, their main goal, their stated goal, was to convert as many soldiers, um, spouses, and their children to their version of Christianity. And by the time, this was the fourth time that they had done such a thing when, when they got to Fort Bragg. They, they took it on tour to different bases. And when they got to Fort Bragg, people like me were just in, in reading about it. And their own websites were bragging about how they had 300 soldiers um, c convert to Christianity from their previous religion on stage together at the same time. And they weren't lying. They weren't exaggerating. I actually thought they were. I saw the videos of it and the pictures of it. And, and people were crying, you know, their hands and eyes closed and all, you know, all, all the goofy stuff that you would expect at one of these evangelical like tent revival type places. And it, it was disturbing that this event was put on directly to uh, target people like me or people like uh, who are Jewish or Muslim or maybe Catholic and they weren't born again types or whatever. And that's, that's disgusting. So we protested the event and they didn't cancel it. Rather, the, the post commander said the reason he's not canceling it is because he would be willing to provide the same level of support to any other group. So the very next day after the event wasn't canceled, I raised my hand and said, I have an event. And <laughs> luckily my bluff came true. Uh, within a couple of months, people like Richard Dawkins had signed on and we had uh, an event that was shaping up to be much bigger than their event from the beginning, just, just on public interest levels. And uh, so, so that's, that's what we're doing, but we're taking the high road, you know, because we're not even, we don't even think it's possible to convince someone in a couple of hours of, of hearing Aiden play some songs, you know, uh, that they're, they should become atheists all of a sudden. You know, it's not, it's not an interest of ours, you know, we're not, we're not trying to change them. I would say almost on a daily basis, um, at, almost every phone call is a bad phone call, <laughs> and uh, if it's not if it's not one thing, then it's another, and it's it, it very much feels like an out to get you sort of mindset. And until very recently, when they were, I, they just capitulated, they they stuck to their bargain. They're, they're actually standing up and uh, standing with us for the most part. Uh, I've got some private things that I want I don't want to get into. But recently, they've come back around. But originally, they had they had told us that, um, okay, we have, we have fully approve your your event. This is 2011. This is over a year ago now. Um, we approve your event, but it has to be in this tiny little movie theater slash broom closet, right? And we're talking about a couple hundred people may fit in there. And they had like a Golden Knights um, demonstration jump. That's a parachute jumping team, right? But they promised the same level of support to us. Now, what are we supposed to do? Just say, hey, everyone be quiet for a minute while the Golden Knights uh, parachute team lands on the roof there. And then you hear like, thump, 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 you know. <laughs> I, I just wanted to give a, a couple of um, perspectives. I'm an ex-army officer myself. I was uh, commissioned a lieutenant um, or lieutenant uh, back in 1989. And... Um, it's a very different situation, but uh, what I would say to you is that, and I think for a general appreciation for people, is that unlike any other career choice that one makes, regardless of um, a professional officer or um, enlisted personnel, I, I, it, it's, that's not the point. The point is that I, I think people fail to appreciate um, that it's like, unlike going for a job on the civil service or in the bank or anything else when you regardless of the country when you when you go into a particular country you're defending that country and its culture and implicit in that is that you know it's it's a given almost that you would share um the religious legacy of that country to to underline that point when i had passed my um, medical exam, my interviews, my all the rest of it for the military college, the cadet school. Yeah, I, I remember having passed all the preliminaries uh, before you can enter the military college. It's a true story, and this was back in 1987 um, in 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 uh, the Cora, yeah, the military camp in Ireland. It's a funny thing. Um, 
in the swearing in, when you've been accepted, I went into the office, uh, you know, just one to one with the senior officer, and he put a Bible in my hand. And I said, sir, I said, I'm not religious. And, you know, I mean, in a strange kind of way, he didn't know what to do. And I actually had to make a suggestion to him. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put my hand on the flag and swear a declaration of loyalty to the president. Will that do? And he said, all right then, <laughs> because he had never been confronted with this before. And it's the same in my commissioning. Um, so it's just that one thing I would say, um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if this was suffered in Fort Bragg uh, with the sergeant there, but um, we in Ireland, because it's it, it culturally synonymous, um, they used to have all these mass parades because mass, of course, given Catholic, all that. And I remember, um, you know, our training was punctuated by Easter and all these and, and these parades and the military was seen to sort of stand out and you, you'd be there in your best uniform and spit shine boots. And I remember I, when I didn't go to mass, the sergeant, my training sergeant, um, made me do every dirty detail known to mankind and uh, d d deliberately ruin my uniform and make me clean and, and do all things. And, and then someone reported him and he, he was chastised for that. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I was just let uh, go to the library during these religious services. But the discrimination was there. But going back to the point I, I just basically started with, that... Um, the military faced that awful um, sort of responsibility. I guess it's the same in the British Army. Um, the Queen is head of state in the Church of England, so that it's kind of presumed that the regiments are broken down in terms of, you know, for the Catholics, it's quite sectarian, um, and uh, Protestants. So, um, but I, I just think that, that people don't realize that uh, the military have that extra thing that, you know, you, know, you, you might be a sort of a, you know, a, a willful volunteer and you want to do the right thing or you could be a career soldier or, you know, a, whatever, a conscripts are different, but uh, that is kind of presumed and it's a kind of infringement of people's rights, but it's kind of presumed you're, you're defending the country um, and therefore it's a given uh, that you will sort of go along with that. I mean, the States is a unique situation, but um, I, I guess the sergeant will uh, give me some feedback on that. <laughs> Well, uh, you bring up a lot of stuff. I'd like to touch on, we definitely do have an analogous situation um, with basic training. Um, it's typically a nine weeks, uh, that's boot camp here. And in, in the States, if you do not go to church, even if you're Christian or whatever, if you're atheist uh, or you don't have a service to go to or whatever it is, if you don't go to one, the drill sergeants will punish you for um, the entirety of, of the time. You will not just be able to like sit down and write letters to your family or anything like that. You will be cleaning and you will be doing push-ups. Uh, I had to sort rocks with a battle buddy, you know, and uh, my battle buddy got me in trouble even. He's like, how do we sort rocks? And I was like, shut the fuck up. We just sort them, you know, and just, yeah. you know, move them around. Um, but, just, but did but, you but, never so, protest? Did, sorry, uh, did you never protest about that to, to no, the ranks? I, I abso absolutely did every day. I mean, it, that it got me in, in more trouble, more heat. Um, uh, eventually, eventually, I just started going to the Spanish Protestant service because I didn't speak Spanish and it was all gibberish to me anyway. There was a there was a guy who said, um, blah, 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 and then a guy in the back would say, "Si, sí, señor," and then every once in a while we would dance around and like do this fun little dance, you know. And I didn't know what the hell they were saying, but. I mean, it, it was a time for me to fall asleep for a little while and write letters to my family, and the bus was like two hours away. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was the best we could do. Sure. And, and I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to go too long on this. I, I would say I don't know if you've ever been in combat. I mean, I, I, I served two terms with Unifil in South Lebanon, uh, so that's like a year or more in total, and uh, we came under fire and lost people and whatever, and. Um, um, the, as for this thing, you know, I really resented this an awful lot. I've been shot at, and I don't want to give too many secrets away and things. And I have unfortunately um, had to shoot other people. Um, but this whole thing that uh, just because we're being shot at, we often spent 48 hours in a bunker when the Israelis were trying to flatten South Lebanon uh, or attacking Beirut. And uh, I know I never uh, relapsed and became religious, and neither did any of my comrades. 
So I, I don't know where, and then right. they were professed Catholics or latent right. or whatever. I, I'm actually glad you brought that up because I'd like to talk about that. Uh, there's there's that old myth that canard. Uh, there are no atheists in in foxholes, and I've been working hard to shatter that myth. Uh, I think a lot of people say, "Oh no, look at my testimony, look at my story, look at this long list of atheists in foxholes, or look at this picture of one." Me, I like to meet them at their game, their their little mental chess game, and, and this happened to me. A a chaplain. Uh, he saw me reading a Richard Dawkins book, and uh, he he said he left a note on it, and he said, "Come talk to me about this. I can't believe you actually believe this crap." And uh, I went and talked to him, and one of the first things he said to me was, uh, "You know, there's no atheists in foxholes." Uh, so I corrected him, and I told him, "Sir, actually, you're very close, but there's no chaplains in foxholes." And that's actually true, because in, in America, anyway, in, in the modern era, in the last like 50, 60 years, chaplains do not have a weapon. Chaplains are, are just civilians on the battlefield for all intents and purposes. If they were in a foxhole, it would cease to be a foxhole. It would just be a hole. So not only are they wrong, and he lost like big time, everyone laughed at him. And then it was so funny that he laughed, and he never said that shit again. So that's like my main attack at it. But there's there's plenty of little one-liners like that. But, but you see, uh, can I offer one further comment, guys? Like, please, I don't want to dominate this conversation, but it is an insight. It's just that the 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 position, or shall we say, the invention of a chaplain was a really clever strategy of the military. If you think of it, everyone, it's just that you you it, the the military is a it's a self-contained ecosystem. There is no in or out of it. Um, you can go inside the barrack walls and they will do everything for you. you there is, there's nowhere else to go. You can either, if you're physically sick, you go to the doctor. And the idea is, uh, or you can't comp if you have a problem, you can't compromise your buddies and you have to chain a strict chain of command. Therefore, the, whether Anglican, Catholic, Protestant or Muslim, this is why it's, it's a really difficult position because the chaplain is, is placed there as a kind of a, a kind of a vaseline if you forgive the expression a kind of a um, safety uh, thing a counselor uh, you know the mender of all problems um, and soldiers do have problems so and there's nowhere else to go if you had a good commanding officer or a good sergeant you you can talk to that person but they strategically place a religious, figure namely the chaplain that's your only place to go especially for young soldiers um regardless of their intellect or anything else and uh no you're so right uh, and, and it's, it's black it's male thing, right? yeah in america like it, like if you have um personal problems like or marriage counseling or something like that and they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on this too uh we've <laughs> it's all public knowledge and publicly identifiable but they have these things called strong bonds, retreats, and, and uh, the, the chaplains will, um, they'll say things are great, right? I, I don't want to lump them all together, but uh, for the most part, they'll say things like the family that prays together stays together, and, and things that just don't help, you know, someone like me. And mm -hmm. like, like, what about suicide uh, prevention here? This whole spiritual fitness nonsense mm -hmm. is uh, pretty much bound to piss off what if some atheist is suicidal? That's pretty much going to piss him right off. And maybe yeah, I also wanted to throw I wanted to throw this out there too. And when you look up your video, the presentation you did for the Fellowship of Free Thought here in Dallas, Texas, a month or so ago, when you look up that video, closely associated with it is an advertisement for chaplains. And what I thought was most amusing about that is that they put all these people in positions of power, and they brag about the fact that they have. Uh, you know, an, an imam, a priest, a, a rabbi, or whatever. They're all from different, completely different, as completely different religions as, as they can possibly do here in America. And they give these these people this this power as like your counselor, so to speak. And the fact that these religions are completely mutually exclusive is irrelevant. They're all given equal treatment as true, even though... The four of them cannot possibly all be true. And then, where do you go? You have nowhere to go that, that is somebody that actually just gets things done rather than making a wish that they would get things done. Well, actually, we, we've actually tried very hard to em embrace the, the chaplaincy's own rules for trying to get 
um, an atheist lay leader like myself. I, I applied to be the first in, in the entire country, the first atheist lay leader to where, like, the Wiccans have one, right? There's no Wiccan chaplain, but if there's some Wiccan guy with plus five fire damage, woo, you know, whatever, and he wants to go to um, a chaplain and, and they, don't, they can't support that, um, then then they go to a lay leader, a local lay leader, and that's what basically we were trying to mirror, and, and I would say, hey, uh, we're, we're meeting up at this time and this time, and, and, you know, we all, you know, we have play dates, you know, so you don't have to worry about us, you know, proselytizing to your, your, your child, you know, we have secular people doing play dates with their children, and, and all sorts of, of beneficial things. We're still banned from meeting on post because uh, chaplains get in the way of it. Uh, they just, just won't play nice with us. Even when we go that extra mile, uh, even when, we're, like, it's constitutionally guaranteed. It, it's, it's absurd that they, they deny it to us, but they do. There's, Mind you, uh, while the rest of you are in t-shirts or what have you, our guest is not permitted to wear a uniform when he speaks on behalf of atheism, because if he wore a uniform while speaking on behalf of atheism, it might be interpreted that he was speaking on behalf of of some military organization and they don't allow that so he must be when speaking as an atheist he must be in street clothes which is why I opted to wear a tie on your behalf hello uh, um, I'm not uh, ever been deployed I can't claim to be an atheist in a foxhole but I've been a uh, reservist with uh, the territorial army with the officer um, for over four years now, and um, I've had very similar experiences. Like um, Sky's the Limit, um, when I was tested, uh, standard procedure is to swear in on the New Testament and um, all the official documentation. I have a certificate uh, of my oath of allegiance. All that uh, references um, that I swear by Almighty God. Uh, they do have... Um, uh, procedure for people who are not Church of England, um, but the only other religious text they keep on hand is the Quran. Uh, so the five of us who were either Hindu, Buddhist, or um, irreligious uh, all had to swear hand on heart, although someone did ask for um, a physics textbook to swear on. I was about to say, I, I, my, my mischievous gene would, would just have the desire to say, yeah, yeah, I won't swear by my religion. I swear by Almighty Boris that the, <laughs> what I say will be the truth, the whole truth, and uh, mostly the truth. I don't mean to interrupt with this aside, <clears throat> but once upon a time I was asked to testify uh, and the potential was that it was going to be a family court situation, and I, um, I, I was considering that if they wanted me to swear on the Bible, that I would refuse. And it, it was going to be a big fiasco. They wanted to point the whole thing on religion, and I thought, okay, well, if they're going to have me testify, and the and the focus of this thing is on religion and how bad oh, we are, well, then if rather than swearing on the Bible as this one person complained that she didn't believe and she was being required to swear on the Bible, so they might ask that I swear on the Bible, that maybe that I should ask to swear on the phone book, because at least that I could show was true. <laughs> yes, well, w when I came in and when I re-enlisted, I, I did not, um, you know, I did not put my hand on the Bible, and I, I told them I'm not swearing, I'm affirming the oath. That's what we do in America. Uh, I affirmed an oath to uh, serve and protect the U.S. Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, you know, so uh, that, that, that's important to me, right? Um, well, well, the text, it's, oh, sorry. It, it's the same, it's the same oath in America, it's the same oath, except you admit, you omit the word um, swear, because you're not swearing to God or anything like that, you're affirming an oath to the nation, basically, and uh, it, at the very end, it says, so help me God, but not for me, you know, I just, nope. But, but, but I, I, had, I had an instance where it was worst case scenario when I was giving testimony to my commanders about this nasty spiritual fitness nonsense. And this commander I had, uh, he was a captain, way outranked me. He, he kept insisting to say, you know, blah, 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 swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. And I said, no, no, I don't believe in God. That's dumb. 
And uh, he, he said, well, we got to get through this. And I was like, I agree, sir. And he said, all right, blah, 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 blah. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. And I was like, no, I thought we just talked about this. You know, and then he went through it one more time and he said, you know, blah, 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 blah. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the yes. You know, but, but that, that if I, if, sorry, if I may. Yeah, but that, that is what I call the ultimate emotional blackmail. I mean, there's, you, you, there's no getting away from that because it's your country. And that is why, because the military is obsessed with uniformity. It's bizarre, it's ridiculous sometimes, inefficient, but uh, it works, uh, bizarrely. And that, that it's just emotional blackmail, And but it's so dangerous. Uh, I mean, like, I mean, even in the Soviet Union in the past, for example, when uh, uh, in the Stalinist era, uh, most of the Soviet era, where religious icons and religion was banned, it was the opposite thing. You had guys who used to wear their, you know, their Eastern Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, used to wear crosses discreetly under their vests and stuff like that. It was the opposite situation. But what the military wants is uniformity. Yeah, I mean... I agree. Maybe the the system is a little different in America, or maybe uh, I still I still have a little bit of I'm holding out for that ethical high ground or whatever. I I really do believe that if I stand up for what's right, you know, I feel like I'm the first doing it half the time, and and I know for I mean I just know I am setting setting history some of these times, and there's people who are like taking notice that wanted to do it too and were worried and I like to tell them like I was about to make this point earlier like when I stuck out my neck you know I looked around and I expected to see an axe coming to get it you know like someone's gonna you know like kill me or something like that right but mm -hmm. I didn't see that at all what I saw was cowards running away knowing that they had done something wrong 